Hi, my name is Bill Holston. I'm 53 years old and I'm a heart surgery survivor. The American Heart Association asked me to tell my story at the Morris County, New Jersey Start Heart Walk in October. After I shared the same story with my fellow employees here at Bayer Healthcare in Morristown, someone suggested it could help more people if I posted it on a video online. So here goes. The story starts with my left knee. Last fall, it hurt and it was getting worse. So in December, my orthopedist recommended it should be surgically replaced. We planned the knee operation for March. So in late February, I scheduled an appointment with my GP to get surgery clearance. The doctor who saw me that Saturday was a cardiologist who was covering, not my regular doc. She took my history. I'm over 50, overweight, I have sleep apnea. And then she looked at my EKG, saw an abnormality important enough to schedule a stress test. I consider this a nuisance and overcaution. I wanted my knee fixed. I wasn't feeling chest pain or any symptoms. I had no family history of heart problems. My total cholesterol had been in the normal range. I had been feeling tired a lot, but I thought that went along with getting older, being fat, not exercising at all, and staying very busy at work and at home. Here's a picture of who I was before my surgery when I weighed about 280 pounds. A few days later, the stress test and another heart test found that my heart was pumping at 49% of its capacity. Normal for my age is between 60 and 70%. The cardiologist recommended that I then have a cardiac catheterization procedure at the hospital to see if there were any blockages in the heart's blood flow. She said that if they, if they found any, they would likely put in a stent or two. Now she had my full attention. Two weeks later, after a business trip to the West Coast, I'm on the table at Morristown Memorial while the specialist did this catheterization. You stay awake during the procedure so the doctor can talk to you. As he probed, I heard him say, oh, hmm, and that he found more than one significant blockage. At the end, I'm still lying there on the table, and he came and showed me on the computer screen. My main coronary artery was 99% blocked and at least three others were 80 to 90 percent blocked. He said, the blockages are in branches and they're very complex and I don't think stents will succeed. The next four words he said hit me hard and to me they echoed and sounded like they were said in slow motion. You need heart surgery. You need heart surgery. I had the next 15 days to wait before my surgery date. Plenty of time for soul searching, worry, prayer, and eating only those foods that I could trust not to turn my 99% blockage into 100%. I called it the scared shootless diet, except I didn't say shoot. In the two weeks while I did absolutely no physical work at all, I lost six pounds. On March 31st, 2009, I had a quadruple coronary artery bypass graft procedure, quadruple bypass, at the Gagnon Heart Hospital in Morristown which is now my favorite hospital in the entire world. This is the heart pillow they gave me to help my chest recover from surgery. My surgeon actually drew the details of the new plumbing he put in right here. Now, I'm a new person, lucky too. If I wasn't for the doctor who said no to knee surgery, today I'd be a walking time bomb, a heart attack waiting to happen, if I were here at all. Shannon Gingerelli, if you're watching this, you saved my life. Thank you again. But here's something else, something that surprised me. During my recovery, I got used to staying on the low-fat, low-salt diet. It's still the shootless diet to me. And I started walking a mile or two every day. From mid-May till July, I went to cardiac rehab, a cardiovascular gym where you and dozens of other survivors work out while wearing heart monitors. During my seven weeks at home, I found myself soul-searching a lot. The extended pause in my busy life, I look back on it now as my halftime. Let me rediscover what's most important to me, family, friends, enjoying the things I work on and working on those things I enjoy that make a difference, doing what I can to help others. Now, more than 60 pounds lighter and with a refreshed sense of priorities of daily life, I feel better than I have in years. My knee does too, hurts less, so I can start the heart walk this year. My wife Janet, who was more terrified about my surgery than I was, has joined me on the food plan and together we joined a gym we go to every day. 
She's already lost 25 pounds and she's feeling good too. There are absolutely no secrets here. Diet and exercise are good for you. I've known that for years, but never really took it to heart. And diet and exercise are not impossible to include in day-to-day -day living. That, that was the news to me. The aha was not just that I had a gun to my head, actually one to my heart, forcing me to make these healthy changes. No, I believe I've been given a gift, a second chance to do it right, to live longer, prioritize what's important each day, and enjoy my life with my family and friends. The gift came with a permanent reminder, too, the nine-inch vertical scar in the middle of my chest that I see each morning. Now that I've joined the Zipper Club, I can't forget what that means. The American Heart Association reminds us that cardiovascular disease and stroke continue to be America's number one and number three killers, claiming 870,000 lives each year. There's also more than a quarter million heart bypass surgeries every year. But they also point out that walking for as little as 30 minutes a day provides healthy heart benefits, and that people will gain about two hours of life expectancy for each hour of regular exercise, even if they don't start till they're my age. My friends at Bayer now see me walking around our parking lot at lunchtime with my iPod in my ears. I love it. And it's why I'll be there on October 11th in Parsippany with my new red cap on leading the Start Heart Walk Parade. The comedian Robin Williams had his heart surgery about three weeks before mine. In interviews now, he says that being alive makes you appreciate the little things, like your breath. I agree. When I got home from the hospital in April, I sent thank yous to people who visited, called, and sent cards. In it, I included this little poem. The surgeon literally stopped my heart while I was on the table. A machine was used to pump my blood till Thumper again was able. I consider the days since 331 as first of my life's second half. I thank God for doctors and family and friends and people who love to laugh. Thanks for the opportunity to share.